Good morning, and thank you for joining us. We are pleased to present our next speaker, Neil Dalkey, with MIM SQL. Please give him a warm welcome. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. So I'm here to talk about key considerations for Cloud Data Warehouse. Uh, I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about the company that I work for, uh, and then the one that I'm going to tell you about for the next about 14 minutes. So MemSQL, we're about a seven-year-old company. We're based out of San Francisco. Our founders are from Facebook and SQL Server. Uh, we've been together now. I've been in MemSQL for about four years. Uh, but before that, I was at Globus, which is a high-performance data transfer tool for research scientists that was based out of the University of Chicago. So you could kind of say that the big data thing is in my blood. I've been doing it now for some time. And so the reason that MemSQL exists is because of this. So the enterprise constantly requires performance. And as uh, the whole market matures, you need to mature the technologies as well. So a lot of companies today are doing a technology refresh. They're trying to rip out some of their old legacy databases, some of their old legacy data warehouses, and replace them with new ones. Some are replacing them with operational ones. Some are replacing them with things like Hadoop. Others are ripping out Hadoop. So you can kind of see this disenfranchised big data users. Also, the market is changing in terms of what the applications uh, are actually doing. So now we have a lot of ML, a lot of AI, a lot of real time, a lot of petabyte scale analytics. And a lot of the traditional tools that people have been using are not satisfactory for those workloads. What's holding them back? Well, the latency in the enterprise is around a couple of things. One is slow data loading. So no longer is it acceptable for you to be loading data for about 24 hours, which is a common use case that I see with some of my customers. Also, people want to see things that are happening in real time. So I'll talk a little bit about a couple of use cases at the end, including uh, Uber and Pinterest. And we'll talk about what the latency is between a click or a ping in a car and when it shows up in their database and their data warehouse. Lengthy query execution, this is not news to anybody. Uh, slow query responses are never, never acceptable. Uh, and now reporting is becoming more and more popular. So as people need more BI tools and need the BI tools to load quickly, they need those queries to execute as quickly as possible. And then the last thing is, and pardon the kind of lame uh, you know, reference here, but the data democratization uh, in all of these companies. So low concurrency means that less people get access to the database. And that's not really acceptable. Uh, and so as more and more analysts and BI individuals are getting access to the actual data stores themselves, you need to be able to handle a much, much higher level of concurrency. Now, this market is not small. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of solutions here, some relational, some NoSQL. You know, some people are using Hadoop. But the vast majority of the operational workloads and analytics are still relational databases. And so when we built MemSQL, we wanted to build something that gave you a relational database, but also allowed you to do the, the high concurrency, the fast ingest, the fast loads. And that's where we kind of come in. So with MemSQL, you can do data streaming. You can do real-time loads, uh, and this is all kind of enabled by our leveraging of memory intelligently and really making the best out of all the resources on your system. Uh, we do multi-threaded processing. We have multi-version concurrency control, so you can have as many people reading from the database as possible. We're horizontally scale out, so you can scale it out as you need to if it's a seasonal business or something like that. Low query latency with our vectorized query execution on the column store, as well as the live data access via the, the in-memory row store. Uh, you can really drive your business to hit the query latency numbers that you need to hit. Now, I mentioned that we're a small company. Uh, and I just wanted to call out that this is not smoke and mirrors. Uh, so I just want to bring up this one slide here about the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Uh, you'll see here, this is the, the data management solutions for analytics. And if you'll notice, we're the only company on there that is not public. So I just wanted to call that out. Uh, this is not smoke and mirrors. This is a real solution. Now, how do we do it? Uh, so I got three little kind of pieces here. So we have the streaming ingest, the live data, and the historical data. I'm going to come back to the streaming ingest in a second. I'm going to go with the live data first. So the live data is enabled by an all-in-memory row store. Now, we are an ACID system. So your data is going to be backed up to disk as well. I can talk to you a little bit more after this talk here on how we do that exactly. Uh, but that's going to be for your OLTP traditional type workloads, the online transactional processing. Uh, and that's for fast ingest, uh, high velocity data, insert, update, deletes, that type of workload that you traditionally do with a SQL server or something like that. Then we've got the historical data portion. The historical data portion is a column store database. And the column store database holds all of your data on disk and compresses it so you can maximize the amount of resources. 
Now, I mentioned, too, uh, that we kind of like to leverage your resources as best possible in all cases. So, like I said, with the live data, we store it on disk for durability. And also, for the column store, we'll have all your indexes and column store metadata all in memory as well for fast reads and analytic queries. The last thing I want to talk about is the streaming ingest portion. So MemSQL actually has created a new syntax in the database world. And I think you guys are all probably familiar with the concept of create database and create table. Uh, but we've also created one called Create Pipeline. And Pipeline allows you to point MemSQL at an external data source, like an S3 or an HDFS or a Kafka, and ingest that data with one command. So for example, I would write a, a command create pipeline as load data Kafka. I point it at a single Kafka broker and a topic. And then I can decide which table I want to load it into, which columns I want to load it into. I can perform any type of arbitrary transformation on it. You can write any of your transformations in any language you want, as long as they execute down to, or they go down to an executable. So it's really kind of a nice system. Now this next slide, uh, I don't have tons of time, so I, I wanted to just kind of put all of MemSQL in one single slide. So I talked a little bit about how we're distributed. So we are a horizontally distributed system. We can do online upgrades. We can do online alter tables. We can do online expansions and scale. We are fully ACID. Uh, it is an in-memory uh, row store. And so you guys probably don't believe me, but trust me, it is. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Lock-free shared nothing. So uh, you know, kind of traditional data warehousing solutions hold a lot of locks. MemSQL holds no locks on reads. We only hold locks on writes for consistency. We also are a shared nothing architecture. So if you lose a node, you can replace that node, uh, you know, just spin up a new EC2 instance, and uh, you, you'll be right back online. We compile our queries. So compiling queries means that the first time you execute a query, you're going to pay a compilation tax. But every time after that, we skip through to machine code, and it executes as quickly as possible. We support geospatial and JSON. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, two of those in the use case section at the end of this talk. We are in memory and on disk. Uh, and so I think I've, already, I've harped on that one enough for you guys. I don't need to go through that. The MySQL protocol. We chose the MySQL protocol when we were uh, starting this database because it's popular. And we wanted to get an ecosystem for free. We didn't really want to be in the business of building a driver ecosystem. We wanted to be in the business of building the best HTAP database that we could. And by the way, HTAP down there at the bottom, I've kind of called it out as row store and column store. Uh, what the HTAP means, and it's from Gartner again, is hybrid transactional analytical processing. It basically means that it's a system that can do online transactional processing and uh, the analytical processing as well. And then, of course, as I was just talking before, we treat streaming as a first class citizen in MemSQL. So when you're going to pick a, a data warehouse for the cloud, uh, the first thing you're obviously going to do is identify your use case. So these are some of the popular ones that we see our customers coming to us with. Uh, ad hoc analysis is probably the, the most important one. We've got a bunch of data scientists, or we've got a bunch of analysts that want to access this database and write any kind of query they want and slice and dice it any which way. Uh, and then you, you kind of identify the certain things that are important about it. So I'm not going to go through each one of those. But as you kind of read through them on your own, you'll start to see that there are some similar concepts across all of these data warehousing use cases uh, that would be applicable to a solution like MemSQL. Those are the following. So performance. Uh, so for these new applications, obviously, you can't create a new application and then have it be slow. Uh, usability. As the kind of, uh, you know, we're here at one of the biggest cloud conferences in the world, uh, and I think it speaks to, uh, it's a huge testimony to how much operations are kind of going down. Uh, having these kind of services where you don't have to manage things yourself and all of that, it's really becoming a, a usability factor that's driving people to these solutions. Optimization, uh, optimization not even just in terms of the actual technical solution, but also optimizing the cost of individual applications uh, and that, that, that type of situation. So you don't have to go out and buy all of your old hardware. You don't have to rack it. You don't have to hire somebody to just babysit it. You can kind of just go online, run a couple clicks, get a connection string, and you're in. And then the ecosystem. The ecosystem is important. Nobody's going to go and rip out a, a data warehouse and put in a new one if they have to get a whole new tool set to do it or a whole new tool chain. So if you don't work with something like Tableau, you don't work with something like Looker, no BI team is ever going to take you in. So let's kind of just walk through these guys a little bit uh, one by one. So performance. So streaming data ingestion with simultaneous query processing is going to be a very, very big thing in the future. And that's what we've kind of targeted as an organization. 
also fast queries. Queries need to be about sub-second these days. It's it really unacceptable if they go for longer than a minute on something like a petabyte scale of data. Uh, so using vectorized query execution on these billions and billions of rows is something that is going to become table stakes in companies in, in a, or table stakes in data warehouses in the next few years. Also, the query compilation that I talked about earlier. Nobody wants to pay any type of runtime penalty when they're going to run a query on their data warehouse. And there's a couple other things on here. So scale out for concurrency support, obviously, is very important. But I don't want to read them all to you, so I'm just going to go to the next one. Usability. So one of the things that I love about MemSQL is we provide this tool called MemSQL Ops. And it's probably the nicest management tool I've ever seen with any database, data warehouse, anything like that, data grid, whatever you want to call it. It allows you to deploy the solution from a single node monitor the solution from a single node. You can understand that the total health. You can see the CPU usage, the memory usage, if you're hitting swap, what's my disk, what's my network, all at a glance. You can hook into it to get that type of information. You can monitor queries, which queries have been running for too long, what queries run the most, what is the, the longest running query I've ever run against this uh, system. This is the type of stuff that people need now. Uh, as I mentioned before about the usability of being able to just go in and click on, you know, spin me up an EC2 machine, and I don't want to have to have a DBA and all that kind of stuff. These are the types of solutions that allow one guy to do multiple jobs, right? Because he can, he can monitor from one place. He gets it for free. He doesn't have to have somebody build in these solutions for him. Uh, it's also very accessible. So you know, it, it feels native. It feels you know, just like any other web app that you're used to. Uh, so it's very comfortable for a lot of people. And it also helps you monitor your capacity and make sure that you're planning uh, properly for the future. Now, optimization. So again, you know, cost optimization is, is what I really want to focus on here. Uh, and so you know, there's a lot of people now who are taking their workloads off of these legacy you know, appliance type vendors and moving them to the cloud because it's, it's more effective. So you can migrate on-prem uh, on workloads to a cloud data warehouse. All of your new applications can just start in the cloud. You don't have to go out and, and you know, sign up with your big red O rep. Uh, you kind of know who I'm talking about, to get another appliance, to build out a new application and deal with auditors and all that kind of stuff. And another thing that I think is, is really kind of undersung about the beauty of the cloud uh, data warehouse is the global distribution that comes for free, uh, especially when you have a global organization and you need to move data around and you also need to have the HA and the DR and all that kind of stuff. When you get that for free with solution uh, or with a cloud data warehousing solution, it really goes a long way. Also, some other ones that are not on there, obviously, would be making the elasticity of workloads uh, you know, with a, a traditional data warehouse when you have an appliance. Once you hit the scale of that appliance, you don't really have any other thing to do but wait until you get a new one in the mail. Uh, with the elasticity of a cloud data warehouse, you can just scale it up on the fly, and you can scale it back down when you need to. And then I think this is the last thing, which is going to be the ecosystem. So the ecosystem with MemSQL is uh, quite nice. Uh, so basically, uh, you can see here on the left would be data sources. On the right would be consuming data. And then on the bottom would be where we're running. So with a solution like a MemSQL, you can run it on the cloud. You can run it on premise. You can run it across both. You can run it as a service. You can integrate with all of the popular tools because we use the MySQL protocol. Any homegrown application, like an analytic application that you guys made from scratch, if it uses the ODBC or JDBC connection, then you can also uh, connect right in. And then, of course, the big popular players in the game, some of, of whom are actually here today. So I actually have, I have a few slides here on use cases, but I think it's probably going to be too long given my, my time left. So I kind of want to pause and see if anybody has any questions about uh, MemSQL or running a data warehouse in the cloud. Uh, and then we can stop it at that. No? Cool. Well, if you guys want to come see us down at uh, booth, what are we, 1,200? 1,200? Uh, please do.